Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 12 of the platform specific series of my 68,000 programming tutorials. Now, we're on the final one of our 68,000 systems for a while with regards to reading the joystick. We're going to be looking at the Amiga, and the Amiga is not going to make things particularly easy for us. Now, unusually, compared to all the other systems, the Amiga joysticks actually connect to the mouse port. Now, that might be sort of not that rare compared to a system like the Atari. However, on the Amiga, things actually don't really work in a way that we would really expect. The, the data is kind of encoded and we're going to have to do some rather unfortunate tricks to actually get the data out to something fairly logical. Now first of all, let's see the Amiga code in action. Now I've got my two joysticks here, so we've got up, down, left, right and fire there. We've only got one fire on this system. Now what I need to do though is I need to reconfigure my Amiga emulator here. So if I go here and I select this to joystick mode and then I change this to gamepad 2, I should do things. So now I can do up, down, left, right and fire here. Because, because by default we are assuming that mouse port 1 will be a mouse and mouse port 2 will be a joystick. So we've actually used port 2 as joystick 1 and port 1 as joystick 2 in this case. And maybe you also noticed that before I connected that joystick, there was some kind of error in a state here. And even when I'm moving my mouse, it's still malfunctioning. Uh, so it's, it seems the emulator is actually dynamically switching depending on what I press. Okay, I didn't know that. But anyway, you can see it is working there. It's just you know, got some quirks depending on the mouse and uh, joystick options of the emulator. So how are we actually doing things? Well, let's have a look at how the Amiga deals with joysticks connected to those mouse ports. Now, there are two ports on the Amiga that we need to read in to read data from those effectively mouse ports. We've got DFFOA for mouse data 0 and DFFOC for mouse data 1. And these have a horizontal and vertical position. However, when it comes to a joystick connected to those, the data is effectively encoded in a rather baffling way. I mean, fortunately, once we understand it, it, it it's easy to use, but it doesn't really make much sense, at least to my mind. And what we effectively have to do is we have to take a word value, two bytes, from these addresses, and then we have to take four bits. Now, bit one will be the, whether our right button is pressed, bit nine will be whether our left button is pressed, but then things get a little bit tricky. If we want to know if down is pressed, we have to XOR bit one with bit zero, and if we want to check if up is pressed, we have to XOR bit nine with bit eight. So it's kind of being encoded, um, and that, and it's a bit frustrating. I mean, we would prefer to just be able to read bit zero and eight for up and down, but that's not the way the wiring is actually working, and that's not how the system is converting the data. So that's what we've got to do. Now, when it comes to reading in the joysticks, there is a different port we need to read in. BFE01 has two fire buttons here. One is for joystick one and the other is for joystick two. And we also need to set those ports to read in. And so we have to set the bits of BFE201 to define whether BFE001 is going to read or write data from those bits. Now, in these tutorials, we use a very common format. This actually extended from the Z80 and it's also in the 6502 tutorials. On the eight bits, we have one byte per joystick. So we have up, down, left, right, fire one, fire two, fire three, and start. In the 16-bit tutorials, we extend that to a second byte. Not that that matters for the Amiga, because in the Amiga, we're only reading in one fire button. But that's the theory of it all. So let's have a look at the code that's actually doing the work for us today. It's a bit long and it's a bit of a pain because of having to convert these values, but let's take a look at it anyway. So the first thing we're doing is we're defining port BFE001, which is for our fire buttons. We need to set the top two bits to read and the other bits to write. So that's what we're doing here. We're setting these top two bits to zero, which means read in. Now what we're doing is we're reading in the XY position from the first of the joysticks here from DFF00A here, and we're storing that into D2. Next, what we're doing is we're reading in the fire buttons, and we're rotating one bit to the left because we want to get fire zero here. Now what we're doing is we're running read controls one. This is our common function, which will do one of the joysticks. We run it twice, once for the second joystick and once for the first joystick. And what we're doing here is we are converting the up, down, left, and right, and we are also getting that fire bit. So let's take a look at that now. 
So here's read controls one. We're gonna to have to use a few bytes here as temporary stores because we need to pop out each of those bits that we need to use to work out the logic of up, down, left, and right here. So we need bits one, nine, zero, and eight here. And that's exactly what we're doing here. All we're doing is we're doing a few bit shifts on D2. D2 was our source data read in from the mouse data port or the joystick port, of course. And we're shifting bit zero into D3, bit one into D4, bit eight into D0, and when we finish this, bit nine will be left in D2 here. So we've now got all of the bits we need to actually do the work. And then what we're doing here is we're using D1 as a build up to effectively do these mathematical operations to get the up and down button statuses. So what we're doing is we're moving D2 and D1. We're then XORing D1 with D0, because remember D0 is bit eight, and that's what we need to do to calculate the up state. Now, as we're doing this, we're rotating the resulting bit to the right into D0. At the end of each of these commands, we're shifting into D0, and that's where our result of all of this is going to be stored. So this is calculating the up state by XORing bit 9 with bit 8. Then we're doing the down state, and this time we need to use bit 1, XORed with bit 0, and you can see we're doing that just here. This was bit 0 in D3, and this was bit 1 in D4 here. And then again, we're shifting that to the right and shifting the result into the zero. Then we just need to get the left and right state, which is very straightforward. We just need D2 and D4 here. And so we're shifting those in to D0 here. And finally, our fire button state was at the left-hand side of D5. Remember, we moved that in here. And in the case of D0, we shifted that once to the left here so that it was at the top bit of the byte in D5 here. And so when we shift the byte, one to the left here and then shift it to the right here. We're effectively shifting the right, the, the fire bit in. Now, all we then need to do is shift three bits to the right because we have no extra fire buttons for fire two, fire three and start here. So we're shifting three to the right. Then we are EORing, flipping the bits of everything except the fire button. The reason for that is that we need the buttons to be zero when they're down and one when they're up, and that won't be correct from the logical routines that were done here. And then finally, we're setting all of the unused bits to one, just to make sure our code is compatible for other systems that may have more fire buttons. You know, if, if our code is designed to support three fire buttons, but work on a, a system with just one fire button, that will allow us some safety there. And that's what I'm doing with the Chibi Aliens game I'm working on. It can work with one fire button, but it can take advantage of a second fire button as well. So that's just something we do to maintain easy compatibility if we are doing multi-platform coding. So really that's all there is to it. We run read controls one for the second joystick, which of course, if it was in place, would be plugged into mouse port one. And then we use the first joystick, which would be plugged in typically into mouse port two. Now, the second controller, we push into the stack here and then pop off back into D1 because when this routine runs, it will return D0 as joystick one and D1 as joystick two. And that's what we're doing here. We've also got this allow joysticks function here, which is just a compatibility thing. Some of our systems need some initialization, but many don't. So it just points straight to a return command here so that if we call that as part of our common code, it doesn't cause any problems. So there we go, a little bit of a pain, but as I say, once you've got the code working, it, it's something you can just forget about. Anyway, I hope you find this interesting. We're gonna be moving on from joysticks now, and now we're gonna look at how we can set the colors on all of these systems. So if you've enjoyed these, please follow along, because we're coming back to the Amiga very shortly. Anyway, thanks for watching today, and goodbye.